Hi everyone, this is Professor Hall, and this is our third video um, at, talking about how to explicate a poem. If you took a while uh, to read the other, or watch the other two videos and read the information about how to explicate a poem, uh, just as a reminder, explicating a poem looks at the poem's meaning and the way in which all of those poetic features that we've been talking about contribute to that meaning. Um, one of the things I would like to say, I'm going to focus today a little bit on characterization and how that contributes to the message. And I'm going to look at um, both the poem uh, and the song. These are available for you in Blackboard, uh, or links to them at least. And um, we also have a link for the YouTube video of Paul Simon and... Um, of Simon and Garfunkel um, singing the song Richard Corey. And if you have not watched that video yet, I'd like you to pause this video because I want you to um, watch them perform the song before I talk about the poem. All right, hopefully that was enough time. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to read the poem Richard Corey first, and then I'm going to read the lyrics, um, I'll skip over the choruses for the most part. Well, I guess I won't. Um, I'm going to read the lyrics to the song Richard Corey, which was inspired in kind of like a remake of the poem. So here we go. Richard Corey. Whenever Richard Corey went to town, we people on the pavement looked up at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, cleanly favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed and always human when he talked but still he fluttered pulses when he said good morning and he glittered when he walked and he was rich yes richer than a king and admirably schooled in every grace in fine we thought he was everything to make us wish we were in his place so on we worked and waited for the light and went without meat and cursed the bread and richard corey one calm summer night went home and put a bullet through his head. And the Simon and Garfunkel lyrics. They say that Richard Corey owns one half of this old whole town with political connections to spread his wealth around. Born into society, a banker's only child. He had everything a man could want, power, grace, and style. But I work in his factory and I curse the life I'm living, and I curse my poverty, and I wish that I could be Richard Corey. The papers print his paid picture almost everywhere he goes. Richard Corey at the opera, Richard Corey at the show, and the rumors of his parties and the orgies on his yacht. Oh, he surely must be happy with everything he's got. But I work in his factory, and I curse the life I'm living, and I curse my poverty, and I wish that I could be... Richard Corey. He freely gave to charity. He had the common touch. They were grateful for his patronage and thanked him very much. So my mind was filled with wonder when the evening headlines read, Richard Corey went home last night and put a bullet through his head. But I work in his factory and I curse the life I'm living and I curse my poverty and I wish that I could be Richard Corey. Now, um, your journal entry asks some questions about the characterization in this poem, so I don't want to give that away too much. Um, I'm sorry, I think it's actually a discussion board post. In any case, um, I don't want to give that away too much because I really want you to kind of dig into the poem and explicate it for yourself. But I will talk a little bit about the structure of these two pieces and how they're slightly different and how that structure affects the meaning. Um, we looked in the first poem with um, motif, with repeating elements in My Last Duchess, and a little bit of symbolism and uh, some imagery. In Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town, I talked about uh, some of the structure there, um, the repetition of sun, moon, stars, rain, and the repetition of summer, autumn, winter, spring, um, and the literal meaning of the poem, um, and how the plot of the poem kind of contributed to the message. But um, here, I want to focus on structure. So, we have 
um, in Richard Corey by Edward, Edwin Arlington Robinson. Um, whenever Richard Corey went to town, we people on the pavement looked up at him. Now, it's interesting to me that we have a collective narrator. Again, uh, I said this, I think anyone lived in a pretty have town, but a lot like a rose for Emily, where there's a collective narrator looking up at someone who is quite wealthy, right? Um, who is he? He's a gentleman from Sol de Crown. He's imperially slim. So he's not slim. He's not thin because he's dying and he needs bread and he doesn't have enough to eat, right? It's imperially like a king. Um, he has time to be fit. He's quietly arrayed. He doesn't dress flashy. Um, he, uh, he, he dresses um, in a classy way. And he seems humor, human when he talks, but he fluttered pulses. He makes people's hearts beat a little faster. And he glitters when he walks. So he's, uh, he's shiny and glittery, someone they look up to. He's richer than a king. He's schooled in graces. So he's very gracious and elegant. Um, and here we go again. We thought he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. And then we come to the end stanza. And I'm going to compare this in a moment to the lyrics. So we worked and we waited for the light. We went without meat. We cursed the bread. And then um, Richard Corey um, commits suicide. So what are they doing? Literally, they're working. They're working all night. They're waiting for the light to come up. They don't have enough money for meat. Um, they're cursing the bread that they have to eat. Now, if you notice here, the collective narrator does not say that they work for him. Um, that's something that's changed in the song. Um, so if we go to the song lyrics, um, I work in his factory, and we get a little bit of background on Richard Corey. He's born into society. He's the son of a banker. He has everything the man could want. Again, the idea of power and grace and style. Um, and then they talk a little bit, because this was later on after the poem, they talk about the, the media. So Richard Corey going to the opera, going to a show, there's rumors of parties. Orgies, by the way, does not mean what we, um, the way that we use it basically means big wild parties. Sometimes they, there could be sex involved, but a lot of drinking and carousing and that kind of thing. And this repetition, I work in his factory. The word curse here is the same cursing the bread, cursing the life they're living. Um, he's giving to charity, but apparently not to his workers who are working in his factory, right? Now, here's what I think is interesting. Structurally, the poem ends with um, Richard Corey committing suicide on one calm summer night. The irony there of that as well. Um, you think that everything is calm and lovely and beautiful, just like Richard Corey. But in fact, he's separated from people. He's probably isolated. He's depressed. And, um, and therefore, he ends his life. In the song, um, my mind was filled with wonder. It's one person talking, my and I, not a collective experience. My mind was filled with wonder when the evening headlines read, Richard Corey went home last night and put a bullet through his head. So this person is reacting to the newspaper's account, right? The interesting thing to me is that we have the chorus repeated after this um, line. So it doesn't end with Richard Corey's death. It really ends with the speaker of the poem, the narrator if you want to call it that. The speaker of the poem says, um, my mind was filled with wonder when I read that Richard Corey went home and pulled a bullet through his head. But I worked in his factory. I cursed the life I'm living. I cursed my poverty. And three times, just as before, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish that I could be Richard Corey. My question is, and this is something maybe you can answer in your discussion board post, um, or your journal, whichever assignment you have. Um, the question here to me is, does this person still wish that he's Richard Corey? So he wishes that he's Richard Corey um, because the man has political connections, because he has wealth, power, grace, and style. 
He wishes that he could be Richard Corey because Richard Corey goes to the opera, the show, there's parties, there's orgies, and he's surely happy with everything he has, right? Does he still wish that he were Richard Corey after Richard Corey dies? I think that your interpretation of that um, is important because the structure here changes the poem's message. The poem's message in the first poem, I think, is um, a little bit up to you again, but one of the messages here is that people are never happy just because they have wealth, right? So the person here with wealth is just as miserable as the people without meat who are working hard. The message of the song, I believe, is quite different. And that's something that I would like you to examine. What's the message of the song? What are they trying to convey? And does the person really want to be like Richard Corey? Or is it just because it's a song and we need a chorus at the end? So that's something I would like you to discuss. And I look forward to reading your responses about all three of these poems. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can always email me. Thanks. Have a great day.